make somebody's pocketbook happier. So I would have to agree with Sean that it is a pure um, political move. It's somebody trying to get a feather in his cap. Man, Travis left went right when I was going to start asking him about. Oh, oh, there, I think he's back. There he is. There, Tra oh, Travis can't leave. We didn't even have to have a discussion online first because yeah. I got the questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, okay, I so. I run away, Wade, but you just pull me back in. Oh, I'm going to pull you back in because I got some serious questions I need answered. All right, guys, so let's stay on topic first. At the end, we'll, we'll discuss our. <laughs> that. So, um,. So Travis, so in terms of the U.S. using its oil reserves, something that many people who know about this saw coming, but people who don't know about this didn't see coming, is that OPEC, or essentially the, the group of nations that, that have this coalition, that essentially determines what happens with oil, says that they're going to retaliate. Now, Russia is one of the main nations and one of the leaders of OPEC, so you being in Russia, I do want to know what your thoughts are about the U.S. dipping into their oil reserves and then OPEC stating that they're going to stop reducing the 400,000 barrels of oil because of this as retaliation if the United States does go through with this. So, Travis. Well, this is just an ongoing soap opera that I've seen my entire life. Uh, you, you remember, uh, of course, uh, well, I, I barely remember um, Carter uh, and all the problems that he had with OPEC, and that was part of the reason that he, be, he uh, lost the election. And, this is going to be part of the reason that uh, that Biden lost the election. Is is this and other uh, problems, um, especially in 2000, uh, 2022, uh, they're going to be trumped uh, completely. The Democrats will be trumped. But uh, in regards to the reserves, um, this is uh, this is and and being an ongoing soap opera. This actually happened last year. I, I watched with with. It was incredible to see like how Russia just flexed its muscle and was fighting with Saudi Arabia, and it refused to to do the same thing again. Um, and I was I was wondering how long it would go on, but there was a, there was eventually a deal. Um, and so it's it's an ongoing problem, and again, it's going to just get worse. So. So, Sean, do you think that this is going to be a temporary fix, or do you think this is something that's going to help the nation long term? Uh, I think all nations know that they have to go towards the green technology. They all know they're totally dependent on oil and they're totally dependent on fossil fuels. Um, and all the nations of the world know that. Um, China, I think China has a lot to play in this. I think they're heavily manipulating the market. Um, just as they're going to manipulate the financial markets as well, monetary markets to digital currency. But, you know, China has a greater, I think, a greater power play on this than Russia by far. But, um, I mean, they're, they're the largest importers of the world of oil. Um, I mean, if you go to other countries just near to us, for Canada or Mexico, for example, Mexico actually is also a very heavy producer. It has its own oil source. Pemex is one of the richest company, the companies in the world. Um, and Canada itself has a very large um, oil, uh, oil aspect. Both of those are not seeing that, but for some reason the border changes the philosophy of the price of gas. I don't know. It's, you know, it's five miles from each side, I guess, but all at once the, the illusion breaks down in the other countries. Um, so we know that's a, that's an illusion. It's been made up. You know? um, those who travel internationally know that some of these things are made up based on uh, economic uh, reasons, and they're also made up on political reasons. So, uh, you know, those who travel internationally, you know, are, are going to agree with me. Those who live in the United States are going to blame the, the current administration. Just like when Trump was in office, they would blame him for everything in the world that went wrong. They're going to blame Biden for everything in the world that went wrong here. Doesn't mean that they, they're, they're, they could have done this or created this. I don't think Biden created any of this situation that, kept, that happened, that made this happen. I don't think that happened. No, no more than I would think, you know, some of the things that happened under Trump's watch is something that he made happen. Um, but they all set the tone, their voices, their symbols, you know, so they set the tone. Um, for that. But I think right now China's manipulating the actual uh, crude oil market. Do you want to respond? So, Wait, yeah. I saw you. Um, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, so the whole the whole thing with, with climate change is, first of all, whenever I bring this up, people think that I don't think it's real. It absolutely 100% is real. But I find it really interesting that uh, since 2015, uh, the China actually became the, the next 
superpower uh, when it uh, when it actually uh, the purchase power parity uh, it, it, it increased above the United States and it's going to be the the Chinese century uh, and so the thing is is the whole issue with climate change it's basically a way to uh, to rein in China and uh, the United States has got to keep in mind we created the current China and we created the current Russia uh, Russia today is actually a uh, a libertarian paradise, um, and China is a, a capitalist country with a socialist name, and so basically, we we now I, I, when I say we, I mean Americans. We now are trying to um, to rein in uh, this capitalist juggernaut that we created, and we do that through climate change, through bad PR, and so this whole idea that it's all China's fault is well. First of all, we created China, we created Russia, the current forms of, of China and Russia. And um, and so, and again, it's blowback. So I'm going to read um, the statement that President Trump uh, released. I do want to say that, going back to Sean's earlier comments, we tried and blamed the current administration for a lot of things. Um, we blamed Trump for a lot of things that wasn't Trump's fault. We were blaming Biden for a lot of things that weren't Biden's fault, again. Gas prices don't necessarily come down to the commander in chief. It really doesn't. They don't. They don't set the prices. They can do things to try and manipulate it the best that they can, like Biden is trying to do now. But again, that's only temporary fix. Again, they, the American presidents don't really control the gas price unless they decide to bomb the nation that have gas. So, let me read um, President Trump's statement today. So President Trump made this statement in regards to what Biden's doing. He said, we were energy independent one year ago. Now we're at the mercy of OPEC. Gasoline is selling for $7 in parts of California, going up all over the country, and they are taking oil from our strategic reserves. Is this any way to run a country? So I'll leave it. Does anyone want to respond to Trump's statements? Mm, well, I think it's well, all I've got, but I think it's smart politics. I don't think there's anything factual about it, but I think it's smart politics. I agree. There, there's no facts to it. Um, I do think that Trump did buy up oil. By, but again, when it comes to gas prices, the presidents really don't determine the gas prices. Again, they can manipulate it for, for small amounts of time, unless they decide to bomb the nations with oil. Bush. Um, besides that, I don't think <laughs> I don't think the presidents the, the presidents don't really have much to do with the gas prices. Now, wait, I think you wanted to respond to Travis. I did see you making faces when Travis was speaking, so go ahead and then we'll go to the comments. So, no, well, I'm curious as to how one of the leaders, even though it is mostly political and mostly all show. So the leader, one of the leaders of the free world does not have the ability to influence certain groups across the world. And when I say that, I don't mean by like slipping them a hundred dollar bill behind the corner saying, hey, hook me up with, you know, the lottery numbers. What I'm saying is, is that he has some heft behind him, no matter who the president of a country is. They have the entire country behind them. So how can they not? Tell OPEC you need to get your heads out of your asses and do what you're supposed to do. Well, he did. Biden did do that. Biden, back in July, went to OPEC and said, listen, you got to start producing more more oil. And then OPEC agreed to um, 400,000 barrels starting a day, 400,000 barrels a day starting in August. And we just realized that it wasn't enough. Now, experts, now there's two schools of thoughts here. There are many experts that are saying that OPEC is just being greedy and they're trying to trying to make money off the back of the Western world, while other people are saying that they just don't have the ability to do more than that at the moment. So because of that, that is why Biden is stepping in and saying this is the next plan. We try to work with OPEC. They're not they're not giving us the ga the oil that we need, so we're going to tap into our reserves. So so because I see Trump's statement as a business negotiation statement, just like any other business. Mm -hmm. But the country's not ran like a business, and you can never run a, a democracy like a business because... I'm just saying, that's how I see his 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 statement. It would be coming from a business aspect. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting what I need. Let's go negotiate. So, so the thing is, is with Trump is, and, and they're both war criminals, both Biden and Trump. So let's just put that... Like, let's put hey, that hey, hey, table. comrade, just go ahead and calm down there, all right? 
<laughs> All right. So, um, with Trump, with Trump, his 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 business his business um, dealings were with Saudi Arabia, and he basically wanted that was one of the first things that he did is that he went to Saudi Arabia and he he basically expanded the Yemeni's war um, where Saudi Arabia is using uh, using uh, American planes with American bombs with American training and American intelligence to bomb the hell out of Yemenis. Now Mel talks so much about race. Um, where's the big outcry about the, you know, the Arabs in, in, um, in Yemen? That's the thing is that you folks are so focused on race as long as the person has an American in their name. It's as long as African American, Mexican American, etc. So the thing is, is that Trump, he, 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 he basically, he went in and he said, okay, look, we have a business agreement and and you guys can do what you want you can go ahead and you can destroy the, the, the houthi rebels um and you can you can kill eighty thousand children the new york times last year said that the, the eighty thousand children are dying because of, of the saudi arabia which is a puppet proxy state of the united states government okay and the thing is is that there's no focus on that and Biden refuses to talk to Saudi Arabia because of one journalist being killed, one Washington Post journalist being killed um, by the same Saudi Arabia government. And so that's part of the reason is, is that he won't negotiate like Trump. Okay, but the thing is, is that foreign policy is always the same. We have no control over it. And the, the consistency with Trump and Biden is always the same. Everything that, pretty much everything that Trump did Biden is continuing to do and because is continuing to do because the foreign policy is the same. It's a little bit different, but it's pretty much the same. They're still bombing in Yemen. Yemen. A lot of brown people are dying, Mel, and nobody's talking about it. So that's the real I'm sorry, issue. I'm that's sorry, the, are, you, are you equating terrorists with brown people? Is, that's not I, what he said. That's not what he said. Because if I we're bombing in Yemen, gonna, we're I think, a terrorist. There is a lot to unpack here. Yeah. Yeah. 80,000 babies, I don't think they're terrorists. Have, I, there is yeah. there's a lot to unpack. I don't think those 80,000 babies are terrorists. So, so, so we're going we're gonna to unpack this. Um, do I think there's a racial issue in the United States? Yes, I do. Do I think the United States has a lot of issues with black versus white? Yes, I do. Do I think that a lot of times Americans, not all Americans, but Americans do view brown people as less than? Yes, I, I do. I do think that... Um, Many Western people do have an issue with race. I think a lot of it is unconscious bias. So I don't always bring race into it. Um, but do I think that? Yes, I do. But again, unconscious bias just because of the way that the, the world is formed and the way that the United States ingests information that they now view brown people as enemy. I, I do think that is an issue. Um, do I think both Biden and Trump are war criminals? I would not go that far. Do I think they've made horrific choices? Yes. Um, I'm trying to see what else Traps hit me with. Well, did I, what am I missing, guys? What do I need to? That, that was a burn towards me. Um, <laughs> that was. That was a. That was a. That was a burn towards me. Um, do I think we all have we all have unconscious biases, right? Um, black, brown, white, whatever. Right now, the only reason why I bring it up in those cases is because white people are in a position of power over black people. That's, well, I'll get to that when we get to Amanda's comment. Um, do I think the United States causes a lot of trouble in the Middle East? Yes. Do I think that we destabilize the Middle East? Yes. Do I think a lot of the conflict comes from the United States in the Middle East? Yes. Um, but if we're going back to the topic at hand, um, hmm. And with the okay. oil. Okay, the Middle East thing. I want to talk about the Middle East thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, is Sean okay. gonna burn me too? Oh, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna set a fire on this one. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna set a fire okay. on this one because you do never confuse the people of the Middle East with the governments of the Middle East. Yes. Yes. You're yes. confusing yes. the two, just like you're confusing the government of Saudi Arabia with the people of Saudi Arabia. Okay. Those are two different things. Two entirely different things. Just like. What other people view, like the Russian view of the U.S. people compared to their government. We're not our government. We, we are our people, right? So we live with our government. We may not even like our government. And that doesn't mean we represent our government, okay? 
So in the Middle East, for example, as you travel through the Middle East, because I've done a lot of traveling through the Middle East, there's some wonderful people in the Middle East. Beautiful culture, great history, amazing food, uh, rich culture, rich I language. I didn't go that far. The food was... Hmm. Well, you've never been to Morocco. <laughs> let's let's you've been to, talk, Wade. Let's you've talk never talk. been to Morocco, my friend, because the food in Morocco is out, off the hook. Okay, <laughs> okay so, um, okay, you know, okay, I digress. That's North Africa, so maybe we won't call it that. Okay, so, but anyway, what I'm trying to say is we've always had a hand in changing, um, and other, other entities, foreign powers, have had a change of hand of the people running those countries, okay? So, you know, we, we were totally in favor of the people running Iraq for one, one time, and we we're completely supporting those before we went to war with them. Um, that's also true in a lot of the other uh, Latin American countries and all uh, a lot of the other Middle Eastern countries. So we had relationships directly with the governments, but that doesn't mean we, we, we had relationships with the people. So, uh, and that's called foreign policy, right? Foreign policy usually in itself is related to economic policy. And economic policy usually is related to what is the most powerful economic thing we can get from each other in this negotiation, which is what, you know, Trump's that. He's a business guy. Trump said we should have took all the oil, by the way. He said that in a, in a, no, I, do I think that's ethical? Well, no, I do not think that's ethical. <laughs> we look, wait, hey, wait, guys. We, <laughs> we, 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 we lost, lost our referee. <laughs> we have to test away. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> what? When the cats uh, me, the mice would play. Right. So, there she is. You can turn her back and forth. You okay? okay. So I, I went off on my rant. Okay, I'm just saying I'm done with my rant. But I went off on oh, my no, rant. Keep ranting. Keep ranting. I want to. Yeah, my, my rant is, is 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 at the core of what what you're talking about in the Middle East, right? So this is at the core of of, of what's going on, and curiously in our our country, but also around the world, uh, in the sense that you know these these Middle East countries they they hold huge economic power over the as well, uh, the aspect of energy. Huge <laughs> power. <laughs> yeah, you were the first time, there. Sean. You were right. There, right? So they, they, they control, you know, global energy, right? They're, co they're controllers of global energy, but their governments are, their people are just trying to get, you know, rewarded from, from living in that. They didn't, it wasn't their fault they were born into it. It's like saying you're, you're, it's not their fault they were born in one place or another, right? Mm -hmm. So, right. yeah, so, I mean, we're all a human race, and we all need to treat each other humanly. Um, I mean, I, I can dream of travel, this is one thing, I, I know, uh, but also I'll, I'll put it back on what I'm saying. I don't think the media in Russia is any more equal or any more, um, uh, you know, uh, right or correct to its people than the, the media in the U.S., Freely, I'd say they were equally. They, they they equally have problems telling people the the actual truth. Yeah, the, the, both the, of them. The do. role of the media. The role of the media is basically it's 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 the manipulation basically of of the people. It's uh, it's first of all it's propaganda, and then second of all soft power. So internationally, so that's true yeah. of any country. Any country, including the country um, you're. Uh, Naomi yeah. Chomsky, manufacturing consent. So, yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean the Polish, like you know, all the EU. By the way, I, I'm going to go off a little bit on Travis. If if all this what we were saying, all the EU would have not have organized, concerned about Russia invading the EU, if they would have done that. And Poland wouldn't have joined the EU if it wasn't concerned about being invaded by Russia over and over again. So it's you know, um, it's it's not the Russia is not trying to invade anybody. It's just it's ridiculous. Russia so. invaded Poland multiple times. But well, not since the fall of the Soviet Union. So, did, did, yeah. did, have you gotten like a drunk in public in Russia or something? <laughs> I just want to. I just want to know if you spent any time in lockup because that would explain the brainwashing. <laughs> <laughs> but let, let's, Another... be honest, let's be honest here for a second, Travis. All right, so because I really want to get into this, and I can see Mel's face, Absolutely. but all right. <laughs> I'm going to give you an opportunity to explain mm -hmm. why you're in Russia to the audience. Right now? It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Okay, okay. Let, let's, so, um, let's, so we're going let's, let's to, end, let's, let's end the topic first, so we can know that we're, you know, so, um, does anyone have anything else to say about OPEC or oil or anything like that? Because what I want to do is I want to get to the comments so we stay on topic, and then, we won't have time for our last topic. We will talk about why Travis is in Russia instead. 
So, Wade, can you read all the comments, plus the smoking bacon comments? Um, we're not going to respond to the comments. Okay. Everyone, because if you guys want to do this Travis thing, we're not going to respond to the comments. Okay. So let's... Okay, no. Okay. I'm going to open my rant. I'm going to apologize. So Amanda says, laugh out loud, black people can't be racist. Oh my God, let I know. LOL. Wow, Mel racist? That is funny. Now you know for a fact this person knows nothing about Mel. <laughs> um, Amanda, yes they can. Leadership from Biden, I totally agreed with the president. We lost Travis. No, he's not. He's not right there. No, we lost him for a second. <laughs> well, at this point, it's needed. It's all political. Travis, I apologize now ahead of time. The U.S. has 34 days of reserve fuel. Using reserves without dealing with the problem doesn't solve the problem, and now you got less reserves. Thank you. People don't understand that there are huge disagreements between the OPEC group. It is a strategic error for the U.S. not to be self-sufficient under a North American grouping. We have too many tree huggers. <laughs> Whatever happened to the oil drilling in the Dakotas and Odessa, Texas? By the way... Welcome to what the rest of the world pays for fuel in Australia. The average cost in the U.S. in Australia, the average cost in U.S. dollars is four dollars and ninety-seven cents per gallon. Like I said before, damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. Laughing out loud, smacking her forehead. That's a normal event with my wife. Uh, that was a good one, Wade at Travis. Point for Wade. Comrade. <laughs> they want us to focus on race that's how they keep us divided uh, that's what I always want to know what's really going on in the world because American media dictates the info we're fed like cattle to a trough they do comrade only Wade <laughs> yes 100% agree with Sean and for Sean Sean you're so smart so that's what we're doing tonight huh? you're sleeping on the couch <laughs> <laughs> hey Travis, Russia is hardly a clean skin in the Middle East. <laughs> oh my God, Mel's face. <laughs> oh, oh, hmm. Do I sense a little Mori Povich? You are not the father. <laughs> I appreciate Travis's views. Point for Travis. Bite me, husband. <laughs> Point for everyone, but wait for that one. Um, I'm going to read, do you want to read the smoke? So the smoke and bacon comments don't pop up here. A lot of the comments yeah. other, where we broadcast don't pop up. But go ahead and read those smoke and bacon. And so then Nirvana. Vegas Luddite says, put the Keystone back in operation. Easy. Sunny Boy says, not a fix in any way. This is a power ploy. Um... Las Vegas says, I'm enjoying these live streams. And Las Vegas says, libertarian paradise. So, um, Nirvana, can you change the banner to say um, why why American Travis is in Russia? Or just change it so people know what we're talking about. I don't care. Find something to put up. Um, Wade, ask your question. Travis, answer. And Comrade, then, um, Travis. Wade... Comrade Travis. I Comrade like Travis. I am not <laughs> saying no. that. I'm going to give you an opportunity if, here, Travis. If you Travis. can't laugh at yourself. If you can't laugh at yourself, you know. Yeah. So explain to, explain to us why you are an American lawyer living in Russia for the last six years. Okay, so first of all, um, I want to say one sentence, all right? Russian politicians Jana Subachka, Subach and Alexander Gordon, your video is criminal defamation, and I demand that you remove the video immediately. Thank you. So, <laughs> There's an agenda there. <laughs> I can't even pronounce most of those words, let alone anybody yeah, yeah. understanding what you're trying yeah, to do. Yeah, and I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been in, in the former Soviet Union off and on for 21 years, and I can't either, so. so yeah. All right, so why are you in Russia? <laughs> because uh, internationally, the United States is the most violent country in the world, and I'm here to help the Russian government subvert the United States. Are you saying you're Economic. an agent? You're an agent? You're no, a, please be very careful with the language we use on this show. Yeah, we're all um, already on the KGB list just by him please, being here. Please, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, the FSB—they already got our phones tapped. All right. Yes, 
We all know that. However, can we please be very careful with the language use, that we use tonight? Use your big brother wisely. So. Yes. Okay, so you are purposely in Russia to help subvert the United States, and you said before the show started that you are attempting for the last six years to join a Russian think tank to accomplish this. Is Absolutely. that correct? Mm -hmm. All right. And what does this think tank do in Russia? It depends on the think tank. There's several. So um, I could send you my, my web link. So, yeah. Oh, I've no, done I'm, I'm, I'm good. So, I'm good. So, here, so here's my question <laughs> for you, Travis. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you were to accomplish your goal, mm -hmm. what would that ultimately look like? So since 1945, um, the threat of atomic bombs, this is the thing, is that useful idiots in the peace movement, um, they don't see that atomic bombs actually have made it the world more peaceful. Um, a useful idiots is a term by Lenin, by the way. Um, and so what happened is, is that since 1945, um, it's all been about manipulation. It's all been about uh, manufacturing consent and basically controlling populations because we can't go to war anymore. And so the thing is, is that my goal is, is basically peace. And the, the goal, the end goal is, is basically subverting the United States so that... Well, what it, does that not, look like? That basically means, um, so the way that it can be done, and it's on my webpage, um, MoscowAmerican.com, is that basically uh, through, there's several different ways to do it, but the number one way is basically um, abolishing copyright, whether it be in North Korea. I've been to the North Korean um, embassy several times. Um, uh, to the Iranian embassy, I've been there twice, um, and the Chinese embassy. And basically, the uh, this is just one example. Copyright uh, consists of, and intellectual property consists of a, approximately 34 to 35% of the American economy. If um, There's several different ways to, to subvert the United States government. Um, and why do I do that? Because, again, internationally, the United States is by far the most violent country in the world, and I could give you a million statistics, and you can't argue with statistics. So, I, I don't. I don't need any statistics, though. Thank you. I do have a few questions for you, though. Absolutely. Are, do you, did you give up your American citizenship? Uh, you want to see my my passport? No, I'm just asking you. Did you give up your American <laughs> citizenship, or are you a dual citizen, or or I'm, are you still I'm, an American citizen? You're just living I'm still, there. I'm still an American citizen, so yes. Okay. And I was told actually you never. Know what the, are you allowed back in the country? Yes. Okay, so I have. Do I have you no understand the definition of the word subvert? Absolutely. And I'm not being funny when I say this. I'm asking. I'm asking. Do you understand the definition of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Economic okay. subvert. So, for those of us who don't know, to define subvert, it means to undermine the power and authority of an established system or institution. So your goal is to specifically undermine the United States. That is what Absolutely. you hope to accomplish. Okay. Absolutely. All right. So because you're a United States citizen and you haven't given mm -hmm. up that right, because mm -hmm. you want to actively subvert the United States, its authority and everything else, you do realize you can be charged with treason for giving mm -hmm. comfort and aid to the enemy, right? Yeah, and that's the reason why I didn't want to leave in September, and that's the reason why I went through um, uh, the, the uh, I went through one of, the, one of the Baltic countries to come right back, and that's the reason why I applied for political asylum in 2016. That's the reason why I applied for refugee status in 2019, and that's the reason why um, I'm still here. And I argued an appeal that basically the United States government can kill me anywhere. And that's on the books, is that I basically, by, for example, going to the North Korean embassy and giving uh, giving these ideas to the North Korean embassy, I could be killed anywhere. And the safest place for me is, is Russia, North Korea, and China right now. And you so. truly believe that Russia is a much more freer country and state than the United States of America? I believe that the United that Rush that Russia is a much less violent country than the United States. One hundred percent. Okay, so and then I got, I got one no, last no, question. No, 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 no
Wait, we're done. <laughs> we're done. I mean, well, we're no, done. we're not done because no, no, because well, literally you can be tried with treason. Yes. yes. So I just, I just want to make one point. I want to make one point. So do we all remember my predictions about Russian bots who are trying to divide the nation and essentially take a playbook and basically collapse the United States, you know, from within by dividing the nation? Just want to remind everyone of the predictions that I that I made. Um, we're we're definitely in a time where this is not far fetched. Um, I'm going to stop this here. Um, the the way you can ask all the questions you want off air. Oh, that's not fun. I want to know how right now he's actually in Russia. Wade. We're all yeah, gonna get yeah, phone calls. We are. Wait, there, wait, we're. All, Anyway, um, yeah, so we're done for tonight. I'm not even going to the comments. Thank you guys for commenting. We are done. We are done. We are done. So, guys, this has been the Power Hour. Thank you so much, and I will see every single one of you guys next week. Have a great night, everyone. Uh, Nirvana, go to the credits.
We can do it today and in the days ahead. We have to fight to end these wars and create a better world system, brothers. Biden, your legacy can be peace. Biden, your legacy can be peace. I protested January 6, 2021 in front of the United States Embassy in Moscow. that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Margaret Mead. 
Jeffrey Young for U.S. House, 6th District, Kentucky. Jeff Young, Democrat for Congress, 2020. He's going to vote for peace. Jeff, Jeff Young, he's for peace. Vote May 17th. Abolish the CIA. Tulsa Gabbard, 2024. 